Come on in. Join the party. Oh, you'd be locked in the bathroom. So we're going to start on our backs, lay down, grab one of the blocks and bring it with you. Mm -hmm. And when you lay down, get the back of your head down to the, to the floor, bend your knees in half, get your feet flat to the ground, lift your hips up and slide the block this direction flat underneath your low back. You don't want it to dig in, so just kind of have to play around. It should be on your sacrum. There you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you're in a little baby bridge. Your arms are alongside your body. Um, even better, I like my hands behind my head and let the elbows kind of pop open. It feels kind of nice. If that doesn't work for you, obviously kick that idea. Everything is just a suggestion. So find what works for you. Hands can go behind the head and then just kind of let the shoulder blades drop to the floor. You can close your eyes for a few breaths and just begin to feel this subtle little opening across the front line of the body. Really pay attention to your breath this morning. So the inhale through the nose, through the back of the throat, and then a full exhale through the nose, through the back of the throat. So just starting that breath early on in the practice this morning. Yeah. And allowing yourself to just feel, feel as you move. Feel as your body, you know, gives enough effort to each asana, but doesn't overdo it. There is a happy medium, as I like to call it. Yeah. And that's part of the yoga practice, finding that each day it's going to be a little bit different. A couple more cycles of breath wherever you are, whatever you're feeling. Good. Keep the hands behind the head. Lift the legs up to a tabletop position. Yeah, the feet kind of will naturally separate. So when we, when we bicycle on the block here, you're not going to have as much extension. Like you won't get as far. So just kind of make the movement. So elbow towards the left knee as the right leg extends out. Just be really mindful that you're not cranking your neck. So it's less depth. Yep. And then switch. Yep. And then switch. You come back through center and then you switch. You got it. Just like that. Right here. Mm-hmm. Rather than feeling like you're cranking your neck, yes, really focusing on that abdominal wall. As you're just switching sides, we're all moving at different paces. Yeah. Yep. Just switching the legs, switching the turn, and beginning to feel. If you're not breathing, it's going to become a very unpleasant experience. So consider the breath. Another five, four, three. Two, one, you're going to keep your hands behind your head for a minute. Legs back towards the tabletop position. Legs go straight up towards the sky. Yep, shoulder blades relax. Head drops down to the floor. Start with your head down, Kristen. There you go. So everything's just flush to the ground. The legs are just up and elevated. And then keeping the upper body just down on the ground, you're one leg at a time going to scissor. So your right leg's going to lower and you're going to pick your distance. We're all going to be a little different. And then the left leg's going to lower. Mm -hmm. The hands can stay behind the head unless that doesn't feel good for you. Yep. And then just lowering and scissoring those legs, connecting to your breath as you move and just kind of finding wherever you are. Yep. So elongating and feeling. Mm-hmm. Couple more. Keep going. Yep. We're going to do a little something else. Good. The next time the legs get up towards the sky, keep them straight up towards the sky. You're going to reach your arms towards the sky as well. And what's going to happen here is you're going to kind of open your arms up. So your right leg will drop to the ground. Your arms will open and the shoulder blades can lift up off the ground. The palms face up. Good. And then you'll scissor the arms up and you'll switch the leg and you'll drop the arms open. There you go. And then you'll pulse it up and then you'll switch the leg. There you go. So keeping the head down is obviously giving you less, less intensity. If you want to lift the shoulder blades up off the ground, it's going to create more intensity. Yep. If your neighbor's nearby, you can just kind of reach the arms in more of a cactus shape rather than straight out. Yep. Keep going back to center. You guys look like you're really enjoying yourself. Yeah. You missed me, right? Mm -hmm. Keep going for another five. Four, three, 
two, one, back to center. Rebend the legs, take the feet flush to the ground, little baby bridge. Lift your hips up, remove the block out from underneath. Take the block in your hands going the long skinny direction behind your head. Drop your tailbone down, Nikki. Just relax your lower back to the ground. Extend your legs forward towards my voice. Yes, yeah, so we're going to do like a nice sit, sit up here. So you're going to bring your, your block and your legs straight as you crunch up towards the front. So it looks like this. So the block's going out. Um, so let's see the hands. The block is in between the hands going the long direction and you crunch up one. Good. And two, just like that. Perfect. And three, elongate as you lower. And four, legs can have a little bend if you need to. And five, good. So it's a nice sit up and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10, give me another five, four, three, you got it, Jode, two, and one, relief, put the block to the side, hug your knees in towards your chest, rock and roll a couple times. Cross the ankles, step into your first tabletop position, move your blocks to the front skinny edge of the mattress so they're there for you. Yeah, wasn't that bad. Wasn't that bad. Yep, make a little tabletop. Inhale, sink the spine down and look forward. Exhale, round the spine deeply and look in. This is real basic cat and cow. Inhale, sinking the spine down and looking forward. Exhale, rounding the spine deeply, looking in. Arms are nice and active. Again, inhale, sinking down and looking forward. Exhale, rounding and looking in. One more. Inhale, sinking spine down and looking forward. Exhale, rounding, looking in. Come to a flat back, tabletop position. Pause. Curl the toes into the mat. Hover your knees just like this up off the ground so you're in like a floated tabletop. That's it. Pit of the drop, belly draws in, spine elongates. Look forward with your eyes. It's the front skinny edge of the mat of a good dristy point. Dristy means focused. Index fingers are forward or a little bit turned out. Outer triceps begin to really fire up. And then slowly beginning to lift your hips up and back to your first downward facing dog. And you thought you'd never be so happy to see it, right? You'll pedal out your legs a bunch of times this morning, right and left, walking the dog. Yeah. And then settle into holding a firm, powerful, downward facing dog this morning. It always feels different, right? Your body never feels exactly the same as the last time you did this. So just kind of feel it out. Couple things to think about. Little micro bend in your elbows. Mm -hmm. Shoulders move away from your ears. Outer triceps firm in. You wanna to begin to feel the support of the upper torso. Then you focus on breathing your hips up off those arms. Your, all your weight isn't dumping down, really important. The knees may have a slight bend or a deep bend depending on how you feel, right? Toes spread wide, great way to access the front side of the shins. Center of your heels start to melt towards the ground. Dristy, where is it? Maybe you feel like you're a complete space, space cadet right now and you're all over the place. Welcome to the party. Right. Maybe you feel grounded. Whatever it is that you've got going on, pick a spot to focus in on, and that's going to help you with your breath and maintaining the kind of connectivity of this practice. Roll forward to plank position. Lead with your heart and chest. And maybe for that first one, you have to walk it out a little. So sometimes it's not quite right. When you get to this plank, if something fun is going on in your body, something funky is going on, doesn't feel good, please no modification is there. You could just drop your knees, okay? No problem at all. Lengthen your tailbone and then just feel. Feel the power that the ground has. So when we practice yoga, everything starts from the ground up. Right. And so start to pay attention. How are my hands feeling on the ground? How are my toes connected to the mat? Can I drive more weight forward through the crown of my head? Can I draw the pit of the belly in and up? Can I melt the center of my heart down towards the mat slightly more? Can I maintain and, and stabilize and hold a little bit longer? You can. Down dog, hips go up and back. Roll forward plank position. 
Drop your knees so they go on an angle. Even if you're a master yogi doing this for 100 years, bring your weight forward, lower halfway to a supported push-up. If you're nursing a shoulder, elbow, or wrist injury, consider just going a little bit or just holding the supported plank. Totally fine. Come up a little bit. Yeah. Restraighten your arms, supported plank. Hips go up and back down dog. Okay. Roll forward plank. Maybe you drop your knees. Maybe you don't. Totally up to you. Halfway to your push-up. Find what works for you. So if you're struggling early on, take the support. Restraighten your arms. Plank position. Oh, boy. Hips go up and back down dog. It's going to be a long six, 55 minutes. Yes, 55 minutes. Breathe your right leg up and back. Yeah, float it up nice and high. If you're in the back row, just be mindful of that shelf. Ooh, that was a good little crack. I think you just got an adjustment. Point your right toes. Come forward and hug your right knee towards your navel. Give it a good little squeeze. Look forward with your eyes. Hug your right knee in. Step the right foot forward and through. Be on your fingertips. Spring to the top of the mat in one piece. Feet can be together. I like them a little separated. They drift together naturally. Long spine on the inhale. If the hands don't make it to the ground, don't stress. They rest to the shins. Exhale, fold. Let the head go. Root to rise. Come all the way up. Anchor yourself. Reach big. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. We're just going to move here. Long spine to set you up. Step your right leg back. Left leg joins the party plank position. Halfway to a push-up. Find what works for you. Maybe you modify with your knees down. That looks good, Pranka. Straighten your arms, plank. Hips go up and back, down dog. Breathe your left leg up and back. Lift from your inner thigh, feel. Point your left toes, come forward and hug your left knee towards your navel. Give it a good little squeeze inward. Then move your eyes forward. Step the left foot forward and through. Be in a low lunge for a beat. Then spring to the top of the mat. Feet together a little separated. Long spine on the inhale breath. Exhale, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Anchor, feel. Dive over, bent knees forward, fold. Let the head go. Long spine to prepare. Big step back with your left leg. Right leg joins the party, plank position. Halfway to a push-up. Revisit plank. Hips go up and back, down dog. One more round. Right leg lifts up and back, three-legged down dog. Breathe. Come forward, hugging your right knee towards your navel. I like to point the toes. I feel like I can get a little bit more bandwidth. Step the right foot forward and through. Spring to the top of the mat. Long spine on the inhale. Connect with your breath. Exhale, fold. Root to rise. Come all the way up. Feel. Dive right over bent knees. Forward fold. Let the head go. Long spine sets you up. Big step back with your right leg. Left leg joins. Plank. Halfway to a push-up. Make this work for you. Plank position. Hips go up and back, down dog, one more. Breathe the left leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Come forward, hug your left knee and give it a good little squeeze. Step the left foot forward and through. Right foot meets, top of mat. Long spine on the inhale. Exhale, fold. Anchor and rise, go big towards the sky. Dive immediately over bent legs, forward fold, let the head go. Long spine to set it up. Big step back with your left leg. Right foot joins, plank. Halfway to a push-up, but pause this time in your push-up. Drag yourself to your first up dog or baby cobra. If it's not working for you, take it out. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Full breath out. Arms stay straight. Look where you want to go. Step, step, float, top of mat. Long spine on the in. Exhale, fold. Root to rise. Come all the way up. Drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. Arms go straight up towards the sky. Dive over bent knees. Forward fold. Let the head fall. Long spine to prepare yourself. Step or float. Your vinyasa, your practice. Adding or subtracting what you need to make it work for you. Downward facing dog is where we meet. 
Arms stay straight. Look where you want to go. Step or float. Top of mat. Land with ease. Nothing jerky. Long spine. Fold. Root to rise. Come all the way up. Drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. One more of these. Arms go straight up. Dive over bent knees. Forward fold. Long spine sets you up. Step or float through your vinyasa. So some days you just come in and you're just going to step to a dog and hold for a couple extra breaths. That's okay. When you get to down dog, feel for a second. Spread your palms wide. Make sure your index fingers, everybody, are turned out a tiny bit. There you go. So let's lift the right leg up and back to a three-legged down dog. Try not to open your hip. Yeah. Point your right toes. Come forward. Hug your right knee straight in. Give it a good little squeeze. Step the right foot forward and through. Yeah. Walk your right foot just a tad to the right. Drop your back down on an angle. Yeah. Keep your stomach resting on your thigh and reach your arms back alongside your body. So your stomach's going to stay on your thigh. Yep. Interlace your hands if that's available for you behind your back. If it's unavailable, you just reach back actively with your arms and feel your shoulder blades squeeze down, squeeze down the back. Good. You want to feel the connection of your belly on your right thigh. You want to feel your spine long and your side ribs zipping up. Keeping your stomach on your thigh, you're going to slowly start to lift that back left knee up off the ground, but the torso is not going to lift. So you're going to keep your belly glued to the top of your right thigh as you zip up that back left leg. Feeling the weight in that right heel, feeling your right hip gripping in. Now, instead of keeping your back leg pin, pin, pin straight, I want everyone to soften their back knee just a tad and then start to lift your torso. And as the torso lifts up towards the sky, the hands unleash and the arms extend up towards the ceiling. Spin the left ribs forward. Yeah. Heavy in that front heel, back leg zips up, or maybe you have to keep your back knee pillow. That's good. A little bit soft. That helps out a lot. So we get to be kids on our yoga mat a little bit, like a little bit whimsical. Nothing's going to be perfect or pretty. You just kind of go with it. Okay. So as you step up now, you're going to cross your left ankle. I need to use my hand to do it over your right thigh. Make a figure four and bring both arms up and then sit like you're sitting into a little chair. Yeah, you can use your hands, it's fine. And then start to lean your torso out in front of you a little bit. Yeah. If you can avoid putting your hands down, that's great. Cause right now I just want you to really feel the hip opener and feel like you're holding that chair. Perfect, flex the foot, hands can come to prayer if you need to. Arms can stay reaching forward. You can keep your torso more up, two more breaths. If the hands drifted to a prayer, just reach them back up towards the sky. Focus on that right leg. You're going to take a giant step back and find warrior one. Yeah, warrior one. So nice big step. Make sure your back left toes are almost on a completely 70 degree turn. Side ribs are long. If your lower back feels sensitive this morning, a great option is to kind of pitch the torso a little forward. Weights in that standing right heel, but you feel your back leg. It trumps the pose. That's it. You look very serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hands to frame your front foot, find plank position, lower halfway to your push-up chaturanga. Drag yourself through an up dog. Literally some days it feels like you're just dragging yourself to the practice, but you will feel better after we're done. Down dog. Breathe your left leg up and back. Lift with control so it just doesn't fling up towards the sky. Come forward, hug your left knee in, give it a good little squeeze. Step the left foot forward and through. Be on your fingertips for a beat. Drop your back knee down on an angle. You want to make sure your knee isn't jamming into the ground. So slide your right knee if you can, Erica, back a little more. There you go. Now your stomach's going to stay on your thigh for the next bunch of breaths, okay? Arms are going to reach alongside your body. Stomach's going to stay down on your thigh. Connection here. If you can interlace your hands behind your back, give it an opposite kind of cross, opposite baby finger, opposite thumb. 
If that's not in the cards, just keep your arms very active. But I need your shoulder blades squeezing down the back. So there's like your little pencil going in between your shoulder blades that you're kind of holding on to, okay? Feel, feel the connection of your stomach on your thigh, your left hip gripping in, your, your left heel feeling it down on the mat. The right toes stay curled into the mat. Keeping your belly down, start to lift your right knee slowly up off the ground. Yeah, your stomach's still resting on your thigh. Your back right leg is super charged up. Good, soften your right knee like an inch or two. Then start to bring your torso up towards the sky. As the torso lifts up, arms sweep up towards the ceiling, crescent lunge. Then you can decide, do you want your back knee soft or you want to fire it up a little more? Totally up to you. Side ribs nice and long. Dristy focus gaze all moving forward. The second we look to the floor, we just think about laying down, which we'll save for later. So being whimsical, you may need to use your hand to do it. You're gonna stand on your left leg, you're gonna drag your right leg into a figure four. Then you're gonna bring your arms up and sit like you're sitting into a chair. It may be a small movement, so don't get caught up. You're gonna to start to drift your torso a little forward. Some of us have more um, room to, to lean our torso forward. Some of us need to bring our hands in prayer. You're really focusing on the shape, gripping your hips in, flexing your right foot firm, and feeling the weight in that standing left heel. Nice, Danielle, looks great. If the hands went to prayer and the torso kind of drifted forward, lift the torso up, bring the arms up. Focus on the left leg, drive the right leg back, warrior one. Take a nice big step, first warrior. And it may take two or three steps to get there. Back foot turned enough forward that your right ribs spin, your left hip grips. Tipping of the torso forward if that's needed. Neck stays neutral, which means you, want to, you don't want to jerk your neck back. That's it. Finding ease in every pose that you take on. Hands to frame your front foot through a plank position to a chaturanga. The up dog is very, very smooth. Add in what you need. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Good work. Look to the top of the mat. You can step, you could float, you can crawl. I don't know how you're feeling, so there's no judgment. Long spine, fold, sit into chair, weight moves into your heels. That's it, feet can be together or separated. Lower half the body's moving down, upper half the body is kind of going up, that's it. <clears throat> Shoot up to stand up, drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. So from the top here, we're going to put it all together. Okay. Arms go straight up. Chair pose. Weight in your heels. Dive over bent knees forward. Fold. Let the head go. Long spine to set it up. You're going to step, step, float through your vinyasa. The up dog is smooth. Make it real easy for yourself. Hips go up and back, down dog. The right foot lands, the back foot turns. Together we come up warrior one. Hands to the floor, plank. Yep, chaturanga. Upward facing. Hips go up and back, down dog. The left foot lands, the back foot turns. So the idea now is that we're building some momentum, some heat from within. It's obviously around us as well. To the floor we go, chaturanga. I like a good sweat fest. Yeah, up dog pulls you through. Hips go up and back, down dog. Arms are straight, okay? Look where you wanna go. You can step, you can float. Do what you gotta do to get to the top. Long spine, fold. Chair pose, weight goes into your heels. Shoot up to stand up, drag it to prayer, drop your arms. You're doing great. Arms go straight up, heavy in your heels for chair. Everything you do is a mindset. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine to set you up. You can step, you can float. Yep. Chaturanga push up if it's in the cards. Up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back, down dog. So starting to get synchronized with yourself. Right foot forward, back foot turns, rise, warrior one. 
To the floor we go, Chaturanga. Up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back, down dog. The left foot lands, the back foot turns. You're in it now. To the floor we go, Chaturanga. Up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back, down dog. You got one more. I'm always happy when I do my final Sunday. I'm like, it's, I'm so glad it's going to be my best one and my last one. Arms stay straight. Look where you want to go. Step or float to the top. Get their light. Long spine right here. Fold. Chair pose. Brittany, you wanted to skip that chair. Yeah, I could, I could feel your energy. It's all good. Shoot up to stand up. Drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. Arms go straight up. Heavy in your heels. Chair. Sit way back. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let the head go. Long spine to repair, step or float. Up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back, down dog. Right foot forward, back foot turns, rise, warrior one. To the floor we go, chaturanga. Upward facing pulls you through. Hips go up and back, down dog. Left foot toe forward, back foot turns, rise, warrior one. To the floor we go, chaturanga. Upward facing is nice and smooth. Hips go up and back, down dog. Ha hold down dog, three to four breaths. Good job, guys. I feel like this train song is a very, like, summer song. I don't know why. Slow your breath, quiet your mind, and just be present. You get nothing else from this practice but learning to have moments of being present. It's a win-win. Step the right foot forward, turn the back foot on a sharp angle. Let's come up warrior one together, warrior one. Yeah. Drop your arms alongside your body. Interlace the hands. Yeah. Inhale the breath. Open the chest. Exhale. Let's come into a humble warrior. So you can take humble kind of like we did before where your stomach rests on the top of your thigh. If you feel that you're a little more open in your right hip and you can snuggle your right shoulder to the instep of that right leg, give that a whirl. But your left side of your body, your left ribs have to comp continuously pivot forward. Yeah, so grip your right hip in. That's good, Beth. Take your left ribs, move them forward. Your neck is either neutral or if you can drop your head down and let yourself kind of melt into it a little more, do that. Focus on that back left quadricep, hamstring, glute, pull up on it. Anchor through your feet, start to lift your torso, but keep the clasped hands if you can. Straighten your right leg on track. Pivot your right toes towards the mirrored wall to the left. Keep the bound hands if possible. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, go down the center. So now when you go down the center, if it, if it kind of tugs on your shoulder and it feels un, like an unhealthy tug, you could dump the bind. If not, keep the bind. Turn your toes in just a smidgen. Bend your knees, definitely. Sometimes you come down and the, and the shoulder opener just feels, it doesn't feel great, feels crunchy. So you're welcome to just rest your hands on the ground if that's kind of what you're feeling, okay? Keep breathing your hips way up off your shoulders. I did this pose on Tuesday when I was practicing and I'd, I'd been traveling. So I literally like folded forward and I felt like I was 107. And then I did it two days later and I was like, okay, we're shaving some age off. I feel like I'm 87 now. That's great. So, you know, really just breathing into the backside of the body. Be patient. Okay, so if your hands are bound, slide your hands to your hips. If your hands are on the floor, slide your hands to your hips. Come halfway up. Come the rest of the way up. Great. Open up your arms nice and wide. So spread across your collarbone. Thumbs can face up. Pivot your right foot forward from your right hip. Turn your back toes on a smidgen in. So right foot forward, back left toes turn in on a smidgen, and then you find triangle from here. So the legs are straight. I definitely recommend a slight little bend in your front right leg. That's it. Triangle pose, trikonasana. 
a series of triangles in your body. If you feel like having your right hand resting on the shin of the leg is not working for you today, block goes to the outside of your right calf as a nice alternative. If you feel like all your weight is dumping down, it probably is, pull up on your right shin. So you create this leverage for yourself and then lean back just a tiny bit. Yeah. Slow your breath, quiet your mind, be in the pose. Easier said than done, I know. Eyes to the floor, hands frame your front foot. The left heel naturally pops up. The left palm goes flat and the right arm peels open for basic easy twist. Yeah. If your block's nearby, you can always go underneath your left hand. You can also come up onto your fingertips. Yeah. Watch your right hip. Has the nature of wanting to wing out. It's a good one. Transition into side plank Vashistasana. So easy transition. If you need to modify, your left knee just drops down and you open up that way. If you're able to step right into it, stack the feet on top of one another, stagger the feet. You're welcome to take on a tree or any other options. Top arm can reach straight up or up and forward. If you want a little more through that side body, looks good, Brittany. Take your right foot and bring it a little bit more forward and turn it on an angle. And I think you'll have a little more security. Try not to muscle your way through. Plank position. Chaturanga push-up, you can. Up dog is smooth, it should feel good, no jerky motions. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Step your left foot forward for warrior one. Get out of your head and just feel in your body. Warrior one, left side. Drop your arms down, clasp your hands behind your back. If you can remember your grip, take what feels less familiar. Open the shoulders and chest, exhale, fold, humble. Be consistent, however you took it on the right side, try and repeat and mimic it on the left. Right ribs need to continuously move towards the front skinny edge of the mat. Left hip grips in. Yeah, back leg, charge it up. Focus on the outer blade of your back right foot and really press it firm. That's going to get you there. This is good stuff, guys. Keep the shape of the lower half of the body. Just lift the torso naturally with control. Keep the bind for a beat. Straighten the left leg on track. Pivot the left toes forward towards me. Make your distance. Pick your distance for separate leg stretching. Keep the bind if it works. Inhale, open the chest, exhale, fold. As you come down the center, the feet are forward or a tiny bit pigeoned in. As you come down, if the bind isn't suiting your practice today, you're welcome to dump it and have the hands on the ground. Few things though, when you forward fold, always keep your knees bent. Yes, slightly. Your torso is dropping, your hips are lifting, your head is dropping towards the ground. This is an inversion. Shifting our energy, calming our minds. Hand slide to your hips, we come halfway up together, pause, come the rest of the way up. Legs are straight, open up your arms nice and wide, spread across the collarbone. From your left hip, pick up your left toes and pivot it forward. I always have to turn those right toes in a little. Pick your distance and find trico, triangle pose, trikonasana. It's nice to come in from a standing position because you can feel if you need a longer one or a shorter one, we're all different. Block to the outside of the calf if you need a little boost today. Anywhere across the front of the shin. So lean back, Erica, towards Danielle. So that left shoulder blade slides down the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can even have your hand on the top of your thigh if it's too much. And just kind of pull up. 
create the shape. It's a series of triangles in the body. That's it. Zip up the side of your your core. Couple more. Eyes to the floor, circle that right hand down, right into your easy twist. You were here before, so the transition's a little smoother. You're high on the ball of that back foot. Claw the mat, use a block. Watch your right shoulder, everybody. You wanna make sure it doesn't roll in. Nice, Nikki. Transition into your version of side plank. If you need to modify, very easy. Just drop your right knee down. It's right there for you. Stagger the feet, stack the feet. I like the right hand a smidgen in front of the shoulder. It's kind of a good spot. Add in whatever it is that you did on the other side. So you're, you're, you're right where you need to be on this side. Nice front, a top arm up and forth. Plank position slow. I've never seen a group of people get out of that so fast. You're like, get me the hell out, chaturanga. Up dog pulls you through your body. Hips go up and back, down dog. Stay with me, guys. You're doing awesome. Step the right foot forward into a low lunge and pause. Reach for your block and step up into Arda. Yeah, you're ready for it now. Arda and Trindrasana, half moon pose. Watch your right foot has a tendency of turning in. You got to focus on that right hip, gripping it up, in and up. Nice, Kristen. Add in anything that feels appropriate in this. If you like a little bind, give it a little bind. The kick would go behind you. Soften the right knee, you okay? Take your block up higher. Why not? Yeah, take the block on the medium to high setting. It's going to lift you up and bring the floor a little closer. Nice, if you took a bind release into a regular art, I'd be here for a second. Don't get ahead of yourself. Transitions are important. Let's do this, left hand to the floor, square off the hips, pause. Slide your left foot in front of your right foot. Yeah, so you're, you're crisscrossing. Baby toes together, heels apart. Use the block if the floor feels fall, uh, the, the floor feels fall far away. That was a tongue twister. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, go down the center. Yeah. Good job. Just quiet everything, calm everything. So to get out of the pose, we're gonna unravel just for a breath or two into Arda, okay? So I need you to unravel just the way you got in, you're gonna get out. Kind of make it a seamless transition. Yep. Soften the right knee and step back warrior two now. Good job. You may need to take a couple steps to kind of find your spot on the mat. Yeah, look down, I always check, because sometimes your feet get crazy in these transitions. Your right foot needs to be forward, your back left toes turn on an angle, and your heel to heel or heel to arch. Roll your right thigh open and then spread across your body. Yeah, so left side of your body, everyone, reach it back towards the bathrooms, but as you do that, lengthen your tailbone and sit in the pose. Rolling your right thigh open. Flip the palm, reverse the warrior. I'm not gonna torture you too much. You're being tortured enough. Come back to warrior two and let's place the hand on the instep of the foot. Let's go for B variation today. I love a good B, yeah. Hand to the instep of the foot. You can go low, medium, or high. Your arm could also rest on the top of the thigh, but keep bending into your right leg. You want a 90 degree angle with your front right thigh. That's it. The left arm straight up or behind your back for a half bind or welcoming a full bind if you feel that. Nice, Danielle. So there's a lift and a hook if you're going for a full or a half. Nice, Beth. Looks really good. Crown of the head moving over that front foot. Right hip gripping in. 
Maybe we should just do yoga on visiting day. They don't want to hang out with us. I mean, literally hung up on me yesterday. He called home, told me he ran out of mouthwash and he had to go. <laughs> and Noah got on the phone and said, how much money have you lost playing poker? He goes, well, I won quite a bit and then they shut it down. Not anymore. Warrior two, come on up. No gamble for mouthwash. Circle to the floor, vinyasa. Good work, guys. We'll keep it moving. Up dog pulls you through. Hips go up and back, down dog. Exhale all the breath out, okay? Clear the space for the next side. You got this. Step the left foot forward, low lunge, and let's pause. So before you just like bounce into it, find your block, stabilize your left foot, and then step up into your Arda. So it's a real concise movement into your half moon pose. Yeah, you got it. Block on that left hand. You got it. Perfect. You got to think for a second. Which type of Arda? Regular. Watch your left foot, Franca. Turn it forward. Yeah. What side do you carry the baby on? Right or left? you're holding and you're holding add in the half bind or just focus on basics right here if you're in a basic version i need you to focus on turning your left ribs towards my voice and sparking up your right toes and if you fall who cares you try it again Nice, Brittany, you got it. Regular half moon, if you added anything fun in. Right hand to the floor, square your hips, pause. Step the right foot in front of the left foot. Baby toes together, heels separate. So nothing fancy here. I just want you to go down the center. Use blocks underneath your hands if you need a little lift. Bend your knees, fold. You should feel this along the side of your body. Yeah, you're draping down. You're shifting the weight forward always in any forward fold. You're calming your mind and your breath. Place the hand underneath that left block. Uh-huh, that block, that left hand underneath the block and unravel for a one or two breaths into an Arda. So just the way you got in is the way you're gonna get out. Other foot, there you go. Soften the left knee and take a giant step back, warrior two. So find your footing here. Left foot is forward, back right toes turn in a little. So you step back, warrior two. Lengthen the tailbone, sit deep. Spread evenly across the collarbone. So some uh, collar, collarbone. So sometimes the, when you feel the humidity in the room, it's good to close your eyes for a few breaths and just go inward and remind yourself that nothing lasts forever. This is a very temporary situation. Sit deeper, roll that left by open. And allow yourself to have a very nice open experience here in this warrior two. Sit deeper. Keep everything calm. Flip the palm to reverse your warrior. And since now you know where we're going, right to your B variation. If you can go right into that half bind or full bind, you're welcome to do it. Yep. I like a block to the instep of the foot. Keep bending into your left leg and creating a nice 90 degree angle. The outside of your left arm and the inside of your left leg should be connected. Lean back, Erica. Come onto your fingertips or use a block. Yeah, it's going to open up your chest more. It's going to give you a lot more space. There you go. Grip your left hip in and turn. Turn the ribs. Reconnect with the breath. The left hip gets a little tired, so you have to hook it under. Warrior two, come on up. You got this. Take it to the floor, Chaturanga. Up dog is smooth. 
Hips go up and back. Down dog. Right foot forward, crescent lunge. Rise. Okay, so bring your arms, uh, keep your arms forward for a second. And just bring your torso forward. Bring your torso forward, bring your torso forward. Good. You're gonna reach for a block. We're gonna step up into revolved Arda. But before you go, place the block on the floor underneath your left hand. Yep, go high, Franca, it's gonna be easier. And slide your right hand to the flat part of your back. Now, step up into revolved Arda. There you go. Grip your right hip in. Scissor your inner thighs and flex your left toes. For some reason, this doesn't work for you. I will not be offended if you step into twisting triangle. That is the alternative, okay? Alexi, turn your left thigh bone down and we're gonna try and get out of our right hip. There you go, nice job. Look sideways, look up, try not to look back because we round. Two more. Right hand to the block or the floor, okay? Soften that right knee and hug your left knee in towards your chest like a little ball. That's why if you have two blocks, it's helpful. Slide your hands to your hips, grab your left knee and come up standing, hugging your left knee in towards your navel. Yeah. If you got lost, you're on your right leg and you're hugging your left knee in. Good. Right hand slides to the outside of the left thigh. Left arm peels back. We're going to go into a revolved twist, dancing Shiva. Yeah, if you would like to grab the base of your left foot with your right hand and extend that left leg forward, just reminding you that the standing right leg should be straight. The leg that's moving forward can have as much bend as you need. Look sideways or start to look back in the hand. Your hand to the outside of that left thigh is perfectly fine place to be. Reach back more, look back. This time you can look back, you're allowed to. Pull around to center, arms up, leg up. Lift it a little higher. Lower the left foot down, sit into chair, sit into chair. We got this, guys. Drag your hands to prayer. Listen carefully. We're going to twist to the left, okay? We're not twisting to the right. We're twisting to the left just because we just twisted left. We're being different. It's good to be different. Weights in your heels. It's hard to be different sometimes. It's easy just to keep going, doing the same thing. Watch the right knee, weights in your heels. Chair pose, pull it around, stay gritty in your legs. You got this. So an Ashtangi jump back would, would be, okay, you're bending your legs a lot. You're bending your legs a lot. The hands come down out in front of you and you shoot back. If that's not on the card, just step back through a vinyasa. Yeah. No chipping teeth or breaking noses today. Up dog pulls you through, you got it. Nice, perfect. Downward facing dog. Step the left foot forward, crescent lunge. Hang with it. You're almost there. Crescent lunge. Crescent lunge. So this is a slow setup. So what I want you to do is keep your arms forward, okay? Like you're reaching for something. Start to drag your torso forward. So the torso comes down, so it's almost resting on that thigh. Okay, don't go anywhere yet. Reach, yep, go ahead and do that. Right hand down to the block underneath the right shoulder. Left hand comes to the flat part of your back. So feel all that, then step up, revolved Arda. The block has to come a little more forward. So when you step up, the side body is very long. Lift from the inner right thigh, flex your right foot strong. Once you get up, if you're able to open up your arm, give it a whirl, if not, just stay here. Scissor the inner thighs, look sideways, look up.
Left hand to the block or the floor, pause. Soften behind the left knee, hug your right knee in like a little ball. Grab your hands around the base of that right knee, shin area. Press up to stand. You're standing on your left leg, hugging your right knee in. Pause, flex the right foot, you're standing tall. Slide your left hand to the outside of your right thigh and then start to peel your right arm back. If you know you can go for dancing Shiva, which is an extension of the leg forward, you're welcome to reach for the outer blade of your right, right foot with your left hand. Reminding you of a few important things. Left leg should be straight. Torso's up and down, looks great. You're allowed to look back this time. In time, that starts to work. If your leg is just bent in half, don't worry. That's a good place to be. Pull around to center, arms up, leg up. Lift the legs, lift the leg up, lift the arms up. Soften the shoulders down the back. Keep the arms up, lower the right foot to meet the left and sit into your chair. Drag your hands to prayer, inhale your breath, returning to the right. For some reason you didn't listen and you went the wrong direction, just do the side that you didn't do. Very simple solution. Watch that your feet, your shins, and your knees stay lined up together. Yeah. As we fatigue, all sorts of crazy shit starts to happen. Yeah. We lose ourselves, and it becomes like a Hail Mary. Just get me through. Chair pose. Pull it around. Stay in your legs. Stay in your legs. Fold over bent legs, forward fold. Great job. Separate your feet, hips with distance and pause. Make sure you're at the front of your mat. Yeah. Step your left foot back. Significant amount into a lunge. Drop your back knee down on an angle, everybody. Sweep your arms up, supported lunge. Yeah. Even if you're used to taking this with the leg lifted, start like this. Hands to prayer at heart. Lean out, so you need your spine to be really long and then hook the elbow to the outside of that right thigh and begin your twist. Point your right elbow towards the ceiling. Staying here today. If you're dying to lift the back knee, you're welcome to, but I was gonna offer another little fun thing if you're feeling up for it. So you're gonna take the left elbow is gonna stay to the outside of the right side. The right arm could reach back. Palm would face towards the outdoor area here. Yeah. Then if you're very bendy, you can kick your foot, your left foot up into that right hand and you can kick and twist at the same time. May not happen. That, that elbow is just kind of hooking in and holding. The other arm is reaching for the foot. It may or may not happen. Yeah, it's a good one. Three more breaths, you got this. So it's a, it's, a, it's a blend of a full pigeon and a twist. Release the foot, place both hands to frame your front foot and just crawl your hands back and straighten your right leg as much as it's gonna straighten and flex the foot. Rebend the front thigh. Integrate the back left knee up off the ground. And just to stay consistent here, step to the top of the mat with your feet separated, about hips distance. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, fold for a breath, get yourself together. Long spine to create the space and then a nice big generous step with your right leg all the way back. Once it gets back into the lunge, drop the back knee on the appropriate angle, sweep the torso up, supported lunge. Drag the hands to prayer at heart. Find the length of the spine. Hook the right elbow this time to the outside of the thigh. Yeah. The left elbow points to the ceiling. The spine stays straight. You want to lean back a little into it. This is a great way to take the pose. So a lot of times you don't need to be charged up and in the deepest place. It doesn't matter. Just be here. If you'd like to add on a little fun stuff, reach the left arm back. The palm will face towards the mirror so the shoulder stays in the right rotation. 
This could be it for a lot of us. The right elbow continuously stays connected to the outside of the thigh and hooks it in. If you've got the range of motion, Erica, slide your right leg back more. It's going to be easier. You can grab that foot. So what I mean by that, see how our leg is more on an angle? So it's more, yeah. And then when you kick, you'll be able to get that. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, if you're not getting the foot, don't worry about it. A lot of us can't. Release the bind slow, hands to frame the front foot and start to crawl your hands back and straighten your left leg as much as it's gonna straighten. Flex the foot. So you feel it in the meaty part of your hamstrings, not in the insertion point. Rebend that front leg, you're in a low lunge, integrate the back right knee, step to a down dog. Roll forward to plank one last time here. Halfway to a push up. Drag yourself through an up dog just to kind of clean it up. Hips go up and back, downward facing. The right knee comes forward for a half pigeon. We're not going to hold long. So about 30 seconds on each side to just get yourself in half pigeon right side. Yeah, we did a bunch of hip opening today. You should feel pretty good. It's good to do hip opening when it's soupy. We definitely created New Jersey soup today. Yeah, you can take this on your back too. I forgot to mention that. Switch left side. If you're on your back to switch, if not, just feed that left leg forward and through. 30 seconds just melts. Come up nice and slow. Yep. Lean onto your left side. Kick the legs forward and lay down on your back. Bend your knees for two sets of back bends of choice. Supported is always great. If you feel open and ready, you're welcome to just dive right in. If not, fingertips skim the backs of your heels. You lift your tailbone up. You can slide something underneath. Interlacing the hands. There you go. Yeah, if you feel like you can go into a full wheel, go for it. So when you drive down into the mat, spin your feet forward and your inner thighs down and under. There you go. Exhale the breath, lower down. Good work. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. And you get to do one more. I know you're super psyched about it, but one more. So if you're going to go up into a full wheel, flip the palms, bring the chin to the chest and lift straight up. If not, just repeat a bridge of choice, sliding a block underneath the tailbone is always a good option. Nice, Beth. Lift a little higher, lengthen from the tailbone to the backs of the knees. Exhale, your breath start to come out when you are ready. When you hit the ground, lower your lower back, hug your knees in towards your navel, give them a good squeeze. Reach for the outer blades of your feet for a happy baby pose and pull the knees down around the rib cage. Extend the left leg forward, hug your right knee in, give it a good squeeze and take your right leg for simple twists over towards the left. Yeah. 
Bye, Kristen. Have a good weekend. Stay cool. Come up to center, relax the right leg out. You got this, Brittany. Last movement, you can hit that Shavasana. Hug the left knee and give it a good little squeeze. Drop it over to the right. The idea is that you get to that rest and you're like, it's so good. I need to just be still and enjoy it. Come up to center. Even it out with one last final squeeze if that feels good in your body. And then we're gonna set up for Shavasana, which is by far the best pose known to man. Yep. Make yourself comfortable. Complete rest. The next two minutes are yours. That's not what we wanted, we already played that. There's no music, just breathe and relax. Take a big breath in, take a deep breath out. Bring your arms up over the top of the head, give yourself a full body stretch. Hug your knees in towards your chest. And rock up however it suits you. Some of us like to stay down, but you're welcome to just rock up. Sit up, legs can be crossed, eyes closed. Final moments of the practice, just feel. Hopefully you feel the shift from the beginning, the middle to the end. It's pretty unique. Hands to prayer, have some gratitude. It's the best attitude. Bow your head. Lift the head open the eyes. Namaste. A good sweaty one. Hydrate yourselves. Be well. I'm here next week for an extra class. So I'll be teaching Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. So if you're feeling like you need to be extra tortured, please come find me. <laughs> Let me know if you have any questions.